Hello students, today in this session I am going to talk about nutrition in humans. Generally the food that we consume contains highly complex substances like carbohydrate, protein, fats, vitamins and minerals. These substances cannot be utilized as such by our body, directly they cannot be absorbed and they must be broken down into simpler substances so that it can be easily absorbed and transported to various parts of our body through blood and this function is performed by our digestive system this digestive system actually breaks the food whatever we consume into smaller components so that it can be easily absorbed and then blood transports them to different parts of the body and in human digestive system there are two main parts one is the elementary canal which starts from mouth up to anus up to anus and second part is the digestive glands here salivary gland is there here liver is there pancreas is there these are called digestive glands so in human digestive system two things we have to consider one is the elementary canal and another one is associated digestive glands in human beings the elementary canal is a long muscular tube and its length is almost 9 meters that passes through the body cavity from mouth to anus. So total length is approximately 9 meters in case of adults. It consists of mouth and buccal cavity, then esophagus, then stomach, small intestine, large intestine and finally anus. So these are the main parts of our digestive tract. Different parts of the elementary canal are specialized to carry out the process of digestion and absorption. Already I told you salivary gland, liver and pancreas, these are the associated glands. They also help in the process of digestion and these glands mainly supply enzymes to break down food. This is mouth and this is the first part of elementary canal. It opens into a large buccal cavity and its main function is to receive food and start mechanical digestion. The mouth contains the following parts. The first part is the lips and the cheek. The cheeks and the lips, they are highly sensitive and helps in detecting the degree of hotness or coolness and the texture of the food. So whenever we take food, the temperature of the food is detected by the lips and the texture of the food is detected by the cheeks. The next part is tongue. This tongue is a thick muscular organ covered by mucous membrane. It contains taste buds by which we can detect taste. Next part is the palate. The palate forms the roof of the mouth cavity and its first part is hard but the inner part or the posterior part is soft. Next part is the teeth. In human beings, there are two jaws. This is the upper jaw, this is the lower jaw. Upper one is not movable, but the lower jaw is movable. Both jaws bear teeth, which are used to chew food into smaller pieces. And this process of breaking food into smaller pieces with the help of teeth is called mechanical digestion. In human beings, there are 32 teeth in the two jaws. In humans, there are 8 incisors, 4 canines, 8 premolars and 12 molars. Incisors are the biting teeth situated in the front of the buccal cavity. Canines are prominently tearing teeth. These premolars, they are specialized for grinding and these molars are used to crush the food. Inside our buccal cavity, there is one digestive gland which is called salivary gland. There are three pairs of salivary gland. First one is called parotid, second one is called submandibular and third one is called sublingual. Out of these three, this parotid, they secrete a clear watery fluid that is rich in amylase which helps in the digestion of carbohydrates. It is also known as styline. These salivary glands release saliva which contains water, salt, mucus and salivary amylase which is also known as styline. This saliva from salivary gland is transported through ducts into the buccal cavity. Small quantities of saliva keep secreting all the time. However, at the time of eating, whenever we take food, then the secretion of saliva is generally high. Then what are the functions of this saliva? First of all, saliva moistens the food particles that help in swallowing so that easily we can swallow. 
it binds the food particle together in the form of bolus for being swallowed as a mass. Saliva helps to keep our mouth clean because it contains one enzyme which is called lysozyme and this lysozyme kills bacteria and thus it acts like an antiseptic. The salivary amylase which is also known as styline helps in the digestion of carbohydrates by breaking down some starch, not all the starch, some starch into maltose. So these are the main functions of saliva. The next part is pharynx. The pharynx is an area that connects buccal cavity with the esophagus. So this region which is also called pharynx, it connects our mouth which is called buccal cavity with the esophagus. And esophagus, it is a tube like structure, its length is around 25 cm. It extends from pharynx up to the stomach. Food, whatever we have taken with the help of mouth, passes through this esophagus by peristalsis. This peristalsis means it is the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the muscles of esophagus due to which food can move from mouth to stomach. Now in the esophagus there is one muscle which is called esophageal spinster and this spinster muscle helps in preventing the ejection of stomach content into the esophagus. Next part is stomach. Stomach is a J-shaped muscular bag like structure placed below the diaphragm. I think all of you know that diaphragm is the muscle which is placed below the lungs. Stomach receives and mixes food with digestive juices and propels this food into the next part which is the small intestine. Our stomach is divided into three sections. One is called cardiac, fundic, third one is pyloric. Opening of stomach into the small intestine, this part is called pyrolase. And here one spinster muscle is there which is called pyrolic spinster that controls the release of food from stomach into the small intestine. So here also one muscle is there in the esophagus. Same way in the last part of the stomach, another muscle is there which is called pyrolic spinster and it controls the release of food along with the digestive enzymes from stomach into the small intestine. Inside the stomach, there are gastric glands and generally they are present on the walls of the stomach and they contain three types of secretory cells. First one is called mucus cells. The mucus cells present on the walls of the stomach, they produce mucus and those mucus protect the lining of the stomach from the corrosive action of hydrochloric acid that is released by the gastric glands. The second type of cell that is present in the stomach lining is called chief cells. Chief cells release pepsinogen which when comes in contact with the hydrochloric acid converts to pepsin and this pepsin helps in the digestion of proteins. Third type of cells which are present in the stomach lining they are called parietal cells and these parietal cells release hydrochloric acid. In our digestive tract there are two digestive glands are present. One is called liver another is called pancreas. So pancreas and liver are two digestive glands which are associated with the small intestine. Now the pancreas has an exocrine function of producing pancreatic juice. The pancreas release different type of enzymes for the digestion of carbohydrates, proteins, fats. I will discuss this one after some time. And this liver, liver is the largest gland in human body and its weight is around 1.5 kg. And this liver is located in the upper right side of the abdominal cavity. And this liver is again divided into two lobes. Liver secretes a fluid called bile. And this bile juice plays a very important role in the emulsification of fats. Emulsification means breaking down of fats into smaller components. Plus, because of this bile, it creates an alkaline medium in the small intestine, which is essential for the action of the pancreatic enzymes whatever enzymes are released by the pancreas. Liver also regulates the blood sugar level in the body by retaining the excess glucose and converting it into glycogen. Liver also removes excess amino acids by the process of deamination. Another important function of liver is that it stores vitamins and minerals. These are some functions of liver. The next part is the small intestine. The small intestine is the longest tube in the elementary canal. 
and its length is around 7 meters. Starting from this point, this all the twisted part, these are all small intestine and this bigger one is the large intestine. The small intestine is divided into three sections. First part is called duodenum, middle part is called the jejunum and the last part is known as the ileum. The first part is duodenum. Duodenum means 12, that is 12 finger breadths in length and it is the shortest and the most fixed portion of the small intestine. The second part is jejunum. Jejunum means empty and generally this part remains empty and its length is around 2 meters and last part is called the ileum. Ileum means twisted. So this part, this twisted part whose length is around 4 meters, this part is called ileum. The last part of our elementary canal is called large intestine. This large intestine absorbs water and electrolytes and forms and stores feces. It has three parts. The first part is called cecum which is the junction between small intestine and the large intestine. The second part is called colon whose length is around 1 meter and mainly absorption of water takes place in the colon. And the third part which is called the rectum. Rectum is the last part of large intestine and it opens outside through anus. So these are the major parts of our elementary canal. Now I am going to discuss the physiology of digestion that means steps which are required for the digestion of food. Now digestion is a series of changes by which the complex food because the most of the food that we eat are complex those food items they are converted into simple forms and absorbable forms by the action of enzymes and digestion mainly takes place inside our buccal cavity it is in the stomach and in the small intestine. So the three main parts where digestion takes place it is the buccal cavity then in the stomach and in the intestine. The first step in case of holozoic nutrition is called ingestion. Ingestion simply means it is the intake of food. The digestion of food in human beings begins by ingestion in the mouth to the buccal cavity. Here the teeth chew and masticate the food into smaller pieces and this process of breaking the food into smaller components is called mechanical digestion. Inside our mouth, three pairs of salivary glands are there which pour saliva into the mouth cavity. Saliva contains an enzyme which is called salivary amylase or tylin and this tylin breaks starch and complex carbohydrates into maltose. From mouth, food passes to the esophagus where no digestion takes place. From esophagus, food passes to the stomach. Here the food is received, stored and it mixes with gastric juices. In the stomach, the gastric wall secretes gastric juice which mainly contains gastric enzymes and hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid that is released by the stomach wall, it gives an acidic medium which is required for the activity of gastric enzymes. Most of the enzymes whatever is released, they can work, they can function only when the medium is acidic. This hydrochloric acid also kills the germs, mainly bacteria, which might have come along with the food. This hydrochloric acid, it dissolves mineral salts and it activates the pepsinogen to pepsin and this pepsin helps in the digestion of proteins. Pepsin is an enzyme which breaks down proteins into peptones. Inside the stomach, another enzyme is released which is called renin. And this renin converts casein of milk into paracasein which is further digested by pepsin. So inside our stomach two major enzymes which help in the digestion of proteins are pepsin and renin. Already I told you that our liver releases one chemical which is called bile. Bile is a yellowish green watery fluid and it is produced in the liver. Bile contains bile pigments and bile salts. This bile helps in breaking down of oil droplets into small globules and this process of breaking fat molecules into smaller components or smaller globules is called emulsification. This bile also makes the medium alkaline. Now in the pancreas, in the pancreatic juice there are different types of enzymes. There are four enzymes which are present in pancreatic juice namely triopsin and chymotriopsin. These two help in the digestion of proteins. Next is amylase and lipase.
this trypsin and another component which is called chymotrypsin they help in the digestion of proteins where they convert proteins to peptides pancreatic juice also contain another enzyme which is called amylase it acts on starch and complex sugars and converts them into maltose and the last enzyme which is released by pancreas is called lipase it acts on emulsified fats because fat molecules are broken into smaller globules with the help of bile and those emulsified fats are converted to fatty acids and glycerol with the help of lipase so lipase helps in converting emulsified fats into fatty acids and glycerol the walls of small intestine contain glands which secrete intestinal juices and that finally convert all the proteins to amino acids complex carbohydrates to glucose and fats into fatty acids and glycerol the next part is absorption of food the digested food is mainly absorbed by the wall of the small intestine which is lined on the inner side by numerous finger like projection as you can see small finger like projections which are called villi the villi increase the surface area of small intestine for absorption and this villi are richly supplied with the blood vessels the blood takes the absorbed food to all the cells of the body where it is utilized for obtaining energy growth and repair of body tissues the last part is the large intestine and it plays no role in the digestion it only receives the unabsorbed food from the small intestine it also has villi to absorb water from this material the rest of the undigested material is removed from the body via anus one muscle which is present in anus which is called anal sphincter this muscle regulates the removal of waste material in the human alimentary system one organ is there which is called vermiform appendix is a vestigial organ that means this organ was functional in our ancestors but at present it is functionless in the rectum this undigested material or waste material they are stored before being ingested through the anus I hope the digestion in human beings is now clear in the next video I am going to explain respiration in human beings till then bye bye take care and wait for the next video